RealAgriculture.com's coverage of Crop Week in Saskatoon is brought to you by FarmLink Marketing Solutions, BioVision Seed Labs, the Canadian Wheat Board, and High Stick NT. We're joined right now on RealAgriculture.com by Brenda Jaden Lepp from FarmLink uh, Marketing Solutions. Welcome to you, Brenda. Hello. Brenda, let's talk about uh, peas. Um, definitely a crop that uh, not a lot of hype around right now because of the issues you know, with lentils and canola. What are, what are some of your thoughts on the pea market right now? Yeah, the price has been lagging and uh, that's one of the reason why, reasons why I'm getting a little bit friendlier on the, on the yellow pea outlook now. Um, we've come through two or three, two years of really heavy supplies. Um, just burdensome on the market, keeping the price from going higher. But up until this summer, we didn't have a lot of bullish momentum from outside markets to get the peas moving. And since that time, other crops gains have outpaced peas by quite a bit. That's understandable if you still have a very heavy carryout in your s d for this year. But um, we're seeing a really strong pace of exports again, uh, and to some new destinations that we haven't seen in the market for a while. Okay, so like, what are some of those destinations? Um, okay, we'll go back three years. and. Uh, we were talking a lot about India. Income growth in India, the, the rise of the middle class in India, just increasing population in India and their massive pulse demand. And they had uh, policies that favor imports and they had um, a shortage domestically. Those things have changed in India such that we were worried about a rebound in production over there limiting their demand. But I think I think that the demand growth is probably bigger than their supply growth. There's at least the potential for India to be to continue as a very strong importer through the last half of this marketing year. So that alone could probably lead to a tighter than expected carryout. But for sure, if we see the same pace of buying from China this year as we did last year, we're going to get tighter. And remember, last year we were forecasting just an enormous carryout. China came in, bought a lot of peas in the last quarter, last quarter, last four or five months of the year and uh, ended up making that carryout not quite so burdensome. Certainly it wasn't you know, a runaway rally, bull, bull market in peas last year, but it was better than we expected, thanks to China. So you got India a couple years ago, China last year came in and helped out. Now, um, last week we just saw a boat leave the west coast to Europe. So it's been four or five years since we've done any PP business to Europe, but going back like five to eight years, they were huge. They would take a lot out of Thunder Bay, uh, peas are a substitute for, for wheat and hog rations in Spain, and uh, they're they're a real big consumer, and um, or they can be. But as long as feed grain prices and feed wheat prices, in particular in, in Europe, are cheap, peas don't come in. And plus, thanks to India, uh, a few years ago, the peas were completely uncompetitive in European feed rations. But so, now, could peas be a real contrarian play for the Western Canadian farmer this year? I'm not going to go that far out. I'm okay. going to say in the next three to six months, maybe there's more potential. And I haven't seen one new crop in here. Uh, but if I did, I'd probably say not high enough, just because of the potential for this year's carry to be tighter than expected. There's going to be a battle for acres. Um, here, you ask, well, that story's not yet told. Uh, peas doesn't even look like it's going to make it as a, as a make it into the, the character list of that story. Like it do, it's so far off the radar based on pricing performance over the last couple of years. But underneath the surface, you know, just seeing that boat go to Europe, I haven't seen that for a long time. That tells me. Peas are undervalued, pea grains are in shortage, and really expensive over there. Then you look at what's going on in the soybean meal market, another substitute for peas. And this is all kind of feed side drivers, but you know, feed barley is going to outprice malt barley this year, it's, and that's happened before. Feed peas have gone to a premium to edible yellow peas before, but is India and China going to let that happen? There's, you know, there's, so there's a few layers here that could be working together under the surface to set up for a much more positive price environment next year than what we've been used to. So in terms of yellow peas, uh, right now, where does peas fit in that buying acres? Right at the very bottom? Well, there isn't even a new crop in. So you got to assume that lentils are going to come out somewhere around 25 cents. There's no lentils either, everybody, which is like really risky. Um, yeah, some of these markets are just not really awake yet to the profits that are on the table from canola and spring wheat. And you give a grower a chance to go canola spring wheat, make a lot of money doing that, you know, that's pretty hard to take their attention away from that option in a year. It's pretty simple, it's pretty easy, it's pretty nice and tight, and a lot of a lot of the rotations are due for a break from the pulses. So, I don't know. I don't, and based on what we see on relative returns for our clients, it's, it's, you know, at current prices, if you took a $7 bid and put it against new crop prices, assuming that was the new crop pea bid, it wouldn't buy any acres, it wouldn't buy any interest. And certainly against a, like a 25 cent 
theoretical lentil price, which, like I said, I think it has to be there. Um, peas are in the dust. Okay. Brenda, thanks a lot. We'll talk to you again soon.